Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. Right, so, so many of my videos have been on oh, apparitions and prophecies linked to apparitions, looking at Garabandal, Fatima, Medjugorje, other more unknown apparitions. And you know what? I've been thinking more and more recently. I've been thinking more and more. As Catholics, are we too into apocalypticism? Are we too into the idea of impending disaster, destruction, chastisement, and cut off from a Christian optimism that maybe maybe this isn't going to be the case? I've put some video up of Pope Benedict's visit to Great Britain, which was an amazing time of optimism. There were conversions during his time in the UK. There were many people returning to the Catholic faith, and he offered some really amazing teaching. Now, of course, We've got the book of Revelation. It's true, and that book means apocalypse, doesn't it? Revelation, unveiling, apocalypse. And that was there in the early church. It was there in the early church. But that did not prevent the early church fathers from developing a deep and rich Christology. It didn't prevent them from going out to the ends of the earth, sending missionaries to far off lands. It didn't prevent them from getting down to things here and now about saving souls in this moment, in this point of history, and indeed, even looking ahead, even looking ahead to the prospect that there was quite some time before the return of Christ. I'm starting to think maybe since the, I'm guessing maybe it could even be a, a thing from the whole of the 20th century, but certainly since the 80s um, in or 60s, let's put it, put it back with Garabandau and also then including Akita in this and Kibeo, there's been a sense since the 60s at least as the world has got crazier and crazier that this means that Catholicism has to get more and more apocalyptic, more and more the end is definitely coming. There's definitely going to be a chastisement. There's definitely going to be something huge, uh, destructive uh, force entering into our world and shaking things up. If not the second coming of Christ, as some people are saying, at least a huge chastisement. But the prophecies, so-called prophecies of chastisement, keep coming, don't they? And yet we continue. Maybe we need to rediscover something of the early church uh, fathers and early church saints who although they had this they had this this long perspective that they were living in the end times already that the end times and the sequences the sequence of the book of revelation was not something that was going to be like countdown to the kingdom marked out in the next 30 years there was a sense in which these events these events are already unfolding and it's a slow unfolding, and it's an unfolding that, that's only known to God, and everything that we have received about this unfolding is in human language, and it's imperfect. And so, you know, maybe maybe we need to grasp the messages of Akita, of Fatima, of Garabandal, of, of so many other places that speak of chastisements. Maybe we need to look at them through the same lens as the book of revelation seeing these as primarily mythic prophecies prophecies that are real but they're highly symbolic and they're things that uh that we should not expect to define in terms of dates and times and even identifying individual nations and individual actions going on you know this combines with another thought of mine that that actually every apparition, and now I'm talking about outside of the book of Revelation, every apparition of Our Lady is for a particular place and a particular time in a particular context. You know, there were loads of apparitions of Our Lady um, through medieval England, and there were loads of apparitions and messages around the time of the Reformation. We don't even remember those now. We don't even think of those now. If you go, to, go on a, a tour through Spain, You'll soon find out that pretty much every village in Spain has had a apparition of Our Lady at some point, some beautiful message of Our Lady for that time, for that place. 
it's only on account of worldwide media and you know yeah exactly the global culture now that the, all of a sudden we give a we give a a cosmic and universal significance to maybe apparitions that were for a particular time in a particular place. And now I want to get to the optimism, not apocalypticism. The optimism. You know, maybe we are still just grasping, we're just grasping the basics of, of who our Lord is. You know, we haven't really fully got to grips with who our Lord is. Of course, we've got the Nicene Creed and we know we can define our Lord as nature and person and all of these things and the Holy Trinity. But we haven't really grasped the cosmic significance of Christ. We haven't really vindicated Christ as the meaning of the universe, the master key to the meaning of the universe and of each individual person. You know, it's 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 there in the backdrop of of the catechism if you look carefully it's there in saint paul's letters and especially in the great hymns in his in his epistles but we haven't as a church fully gone on board with the idea that christ makes sense of what it is to be a human being and that christ makes sense of the the separation of the sexes that the incarnation is the meaning of the entirety of the cosmos the idea that the fact that there's matter is because god is planning to take on flesh to enter among us as a free act of love wanting to enter into his creation this is a vision that father hugh mckenzie and i and many others have been exploring this idea of as christ as the master key to the meaning of the universe and of the the individual person followers of father edward holloway a catholic theologian and philosopher of the last century who wrote very profoundly on the need for a new synthesis between modern science and the catholic faith that actually we cannot see the incarnation as just a kind of add-on to to the history of humanity but that almighty god in planning the universe is thinking about a free gift of himself and that this is written into the nature of reason is written into the nature of the formation of particles into hierarchies of unity throughout the universe it's because god is creating all things through his wisdom uh, making the world the universe dripping with intelligence inviting us to get to know him that the universe isn't the eternal wisdom but the universe is kind of a created reflection of the wisdom of God and a cradle for the eternal wisdom to take flesh and dwell with his creatures. With us, his creatures created in his image, like him, the supreme mind possessing created minds of our own, minds that are spiritual with free will and intelligence, capable of creating new hierarchies of unity chairs tables photocopiers computer screens shoes we behave like the logos because we're created in view of the logos and that the best way for us to live is to live like the logos made flesh jesus christ is a meaning not only to the meaning of the universe and the formation of the universe but our own individual lives because the good life for us as humans is to live like him. So I've entitled this video, I've entitled this video, Optimism, Not Apocalypticism. Because even if you disagree with some of the things I've just been saying there, or don't understand it, maybe you can agree with me that we're never gonna evangelize, we're never gonna do much if we are filled with a sense of utter apocalypticism. If we are all filled with a sense of end of the world, imminent warning, imminent chastisement, you know, we're not going to do much, probably. We're just going to put our, put our, you know, close our curtains and lock the door, bolt the door, and maybe watch the traditional mass and, and just keep our own little online community. But that is not historic Catholicism. And even in, even in for example, the days of Pope St. Gregory the Great, he was under the impression... He was under the impression that the end of the world was coming, Pope Gregory the Great. And he was under that impression because he had started to hear about the rise of this false prophet uh, in, 
in Arabia, spreading his false religion around uh, that area and, and invading many territories, bringing havoc for Christians. He thought the end. Of, he thought that meant that the end of the world was imminent. But for him, that didn't mean a kind of apocalypticism of closing the door and um, and the curtains and kind of hunkering in and storing up food prepping for the bad days ahead for him it meant sending saint augustine to england to convert the pagan nations before the end finally came and he didn't charge saint augustine to go and preach imminent um end of the world he charged saint augustine just to to preach the fundamentals of, of the Christian faith and an optimism that Christ is the answer, that Christ offers something far greater uh, than the pagan society offers. That's something we have to come back to. Many people are saying that we're living like the days of the Roman Empire once again and that we're Christians living, living in the days of the Roman Empire. But let's not live like Christians who are hiding, hiding the idea that Christians were hiding in in the catacombs i'm not sure that's entirely true anyway because the faith spread because people were sharing it we need to share our faith we need to even if we believe in an apocalypticism like saint gregory the great did even if we believe in it we need to kind of in one sense keep that as a personal and private devotion that impels us to evangelize and to evangelize with the core message of of our faith and of the truths of the catholic church not with a message of apocalypticism not with a message of oh the warning is coming not with any of that we need to focus on an optimism also that maybe maybe there's not going to be a continual decline a continual decline of the catholic faith from now on until until our lord returns maybe maybe we can have an optimism that says we're in something akin to the crisis of the french revolution the crisis in which or the crisis of the the spanish civil war you know large parts of spain were completely uh, the anarchist parts of spain had largely largely been taken over by by a godlessness but that all changed and again, the French Revolution, <laughs> only whatever, was it 50 years afterwards? We have St. John Vianney at the height of his powers when we're told nearly at least 10 percent, maybe even 50 percent of France traveled to ours in his day. Things changed very quickly. Let's have a, an optimism that we can share the faith in a way that is coherent and powerful and convincing. We don't need a Catholicism of apocalypticism we need a catholicism of optimism that our lord is with us and that maybe maybe we're just still in the very early days of christianity may almighty god bless you may our lady intercede for you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen